right, that's our intro video. And now we have our presentation. Okay, Tommy Bob, this is our project's name. Here is a table of contents. We have a timeline um, presentation that we have three weeks in total. Well, let me open. And so this is the meet the team page for the week one. I am Chetan. I am the project manager. There is Rene, who's the front end engineer. Uh, we have Fan Bob for uh, back end. Full stack development is done by Vincent, and uh, the other back end engineer is Chris. Yeah, we are five people. We, we we should have we should be a five people team, but some something happened to our team. We will see that in the following presentation. Why this is so stuck? Okay. Yeah, the problem we want to focus on is um, nowadays in modern in modern society, people are facing a lot of stress, st pressure, a lot of stressed. People are facing facing a lot of challenging every single ch challenges every single day. So people are after the work, after a, a whole day of study, people are lazy to think of jokes. People are lazy to be funny. We want to focus on that problem. So the solution we have over here is a bot that is capable to generate some jokes, which is similar to the previous project by um, the Jokinator, right? Sorry, there are some text. Yeah. Mm, Sorry, for the front end, we have um, HTML, JavaScript, React, Nods, Byte. Um, back end, we have Python and Django. Um, for development, we have Git and GitHub, and we use Discord and Zoom to communicate. For models, we have um, two two models in total. We have two trials, I should say. Um, um, so we also considered Lunchtime before, but, but eventually we did not implement that. Yeah, sorry for accidentally speaking over you, Bob. That was my bad. This is what I'm supposed to say. Um, so our targets and end goals are basically, uh, we wanted like a text box input. We wanted, uh, that, that way you could just type in any words you want and it will generate the joke for you. Um, we wanted people to be able to create an account. And so that way they can actually save the jokes that they generate and then come back to them later. Um, so that was a big, uh, so the create an account page and the save jokes page. And then lastly, we have the meet the team page and our mission page, just info stuff. For the back end, it's going to be Django, um, and again, sign in ability to create an account. And uh, yeah, and I just want to also mention that like a big part of like our group was more focused on like implementing React and Django rather than necessarily just the AI thing. Because I know a lot of you guys used Replit, but uh, a big part of our group was using uh, React and Django, which are like production ready stuff for like like full-on websites so i just wanted to say that as well so our success criteria what are we defining as success so uh the jokes that are generated have to make people laugh um the website that we create has to be usable by everybody so it just has to be very simple easy to use and the jokes that we generate don't have to be factual uh, we don't really care if they're factual or not. They just have to be funny. Um, and then also we don't want to generate any mean jokes. We don't want people to feel like hurt. I like the jokes that we generate. We're all about positivity and reducing that stress. So, uh, yeah. Somehow I'm muted. Um, now it's uh, week two progress. Um, meet the team again. Um, we lost Renee because uh, unfortunately she has some conflicts in schedule and eventually she said she felt like she cannot do the AI camp anymore. So she kind of quitted, but we still have the uh, fiction and the demo of the front end from her. The second week is mainly about model training because a good model is a basic of every good project. 
Um, first, we tried uh, fine tuning, which is a common you common choice for a lot of groups. Um, we thought we, we chose uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is common uh, widely known as ChatGPT. We tried to tune the model through OpenAI's API, and we formed a relatively small data set, relatively small like compared to our uh, the data set we have in, in the end. We got some through Kaggle, uh, but it did not go too well due to the repeatedly happened disconnection. And over here, you can see there is a stream interrupted cli client disconnected line. And um, somehow this happened to a lot of people. This happened on Chitan's computer, on my computer. Um, uh, basically, um, this is kind of unsolvable. So eventually, we decided to switch our choice. So our second attempt, we tried to use something called Llama 2. If you've been paying attention to AI news, you might have heard that Llama 2 is an open source AI model that's comparable to ChatGPT. And open source meaning you can actually download the model onto your computer and use it. So we attempted to go this route. Um, but unfortunately, when we, so first we tried to use that on Hugging Face, but the Hugging Face API was disabled. Then we tried to download the model uh, onto my computer and try and run it but the time it took to generate a response just took like a minute, which is like way too long for what we were trying to do. So finally, we tried to re-upload the Llama 2 model as our own and enable the Hugging Face API, but the model was just too big for that to happen. So we kind of had to cut out the Llama 2 idea. Eventually, we have to come up with a prompt engineering. This is a final tryout, which means this is a working one. Um, similar to fine tuning, but um, the fine tuning is change the model itself, while prompt engineering is more like leading the model to where it should be. Um, we've got the OpenAI key from AI Camp this time. Uh, we switched to using this, this prompt engineering thing to generate jokes. This was the best option because it meant more generalized data set. Uh, now we have 3.7K data sets, uh, 3.7K code token, I'm sorry. Um, this is much bigger than the previous one. Um, it is more efficient. Uh, it is cost less time um, because um, we do not need to wait for OpenAI stuff. We can do it locally. It is easier to access. Um, it is enhanced accuracy and relevance due to the bigger uh, data set. So currently we are using this one in our final project. Our uh, data set consisted of around like 3.k tokens as, as Bob told, and it was combining. So we, we did use various different data sets on the net and uh, it were divided into three main categories of the jokes. It was a knock knock joke, question and answer joke and a completion joke. And in order to reduce the cost, we divided each prompt according to the type of joke so that the cost is reduced and model is more efficient. And this is this is the progress, and we were able to accomplish our MVP by the week two. Uh, it, it's a Figma design, and we tried to imitate this uh, by Vincent, who, who used uh, React in order to create the front end for this. Okay, so week three, uh, meet the team update. Uh, we're now two members down, and I'm also packing for college. So. That seems pretty bad, but actually this week we got like so much done uh, and I'm actually really proud of my group for that. So let's see what we got done. So account management, this is one of the things we wanted to do is create the ability for people to sign in and save their jokes. So we implemented uh, the account management in the front end and the back end. And you can see on the bottom two, the bottom two pictures are the front, what the front end looks like, the website. That's what the website looks like. So you can easily, you know, register an account or sign into an account. And if you look on the top right corner, that's kind of like some of our back end code to make that happen. Uh, so yeah. And then of course we ran into a lot of issues, but uh, we were luckily able to solve them all in time. So prompt engineering, this is where like the, it gets pretty complicated, but also pretty like cool. So prompt engineering basically is engineering the prompt that you give to the AI model 
to get your specific joke. So we want to get like good, high quality jokes. So we really needed to work on this like prompt engineering stuff. So if you look at the top, we have our task description. We're saying you are, an, we're telling the model, what is the model going to do? So we're telling the model, you are an assistant that makes funny and sassy jokes. The user is going to ask you to make a joke type joke uh, or like a knock knock joke or like a Q&A joke. And then you're going to out of a set of words that you give it. And then you are going to produce that joke. Okay. And then we give the model some examples. So if you look on the top right corner, we have a list of like different uh, joke examples. And then we put that into like a certain format where it's like the user role and the assistant role. Uh, so user uh, gives a command and the assistant does it. And then we put that into the prompt. And then finally, we put the user's actual request. So make a knock knock joke with the words blank. And that's the blank is the words that the user put in. And then finally, we get our full on prompt. And then we send that prompt over to the OpenAI's API. And we hopefully get a good output that we want. So another cool thing that we wanted to do, but like we didn't really have the time to fully complete uh, was a ranking system. So remember how I said we choose like random examples from our list of uh, example jokes? We wanted to create the ability to see like users could like uh, choose their favorite jokes and the examples that were used to create those jokes, we rank them higher on a scoreboard. And then we take like the best examples from that scoreboard and give those and put those into the prompts. So that way we're figuring out what joke examples are the best examples uh, to put inside the prompts. Now we got as far as like creating the scoreboard, but we, we didn't have enough time to implement the functionality to actually like uh, make better jokes based off the best examples. So we didn't have the time for that. But I think this is something cool. It's basically prompt engineering by human feedback. Um, so I think if we had more time, this is definitely something we would have liked to do. While so many crazy things happening in the front end, I also made two videos. Uh, we have two videos, one for intro, which you guys just saw it. And one for example of generation, and I will play that one after the presentation is uh, finished. We use various uh, tools um, like runway, stable diffusion, um, mid journey, all those kind of things to reach our final goal. Um, the icon, the Raven icon is transformed as you can see um, in the previous video. We achieved that one with uh, runway. And in the fall, uh, uh, this one is with stable diffusion and you will see me and Vincent in, in, in runway version in the, in, in the upcoming video. Uh, this is something that not landed uh, after all, it's deployment. We first tried to deploy this, our whole project on the railway. Um, railway is a public website that's uh, available to everyone. As long as you are familiar with GitHub, you can deploy your project onto it. But unfortunately, uh, it takes way too long. Like uh, we need to deploy front end and back end independently. And each of them, each tryout takes 20 minutes. and the environment variables are not, um, is, is a problem. And usually, um, although you can see in this picture, although it is set completed, but it is red. Usually a runnable deployment is green. Uh, and after three or four hours try and trying, we decided to give up and we, we will, we will give our a final presentation with interaction section in as locally in our local computer. And after the class, I, I own an Amazon server. So I tried, I give another try to deploy it on the AWS, um, but actually it causes even more problem because AWS has its own format. And even the very basic PIP comment is, command is different for the AWS server. Um, uh, after about three hours, yeah, I, I guess three hours of, another three hours of hard working, the backend is working, but eventually the React thing is not runnable in the AWS. The AWS. So, yeah, the deployment is kind of failed. But eventually, we have our final project. So, if you go to our GitHub website, 
which we will share we will share in the end of the project. You and if you deploy it in your on your own computer, you will see this page and you can generate some jokes um, by yourself. All right, that's the end of our presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. And after this, I will do another video. And then after that, I'm going to I'm going to do a live demonstration of it working. So keep that in mind. Be come up with some words to uh, just put in and then we'll make jokes out of them. All right, here it is. And Vincent will share our presentation on uh, our, our project. Okay, you guys can all see my screen. Okay, so yes. just just give me a word. Give me give me a word, uh, and we'll put it in. Anybody? Portion. What what was that? Torsion. Torsion. Did I, did I spell that correctly? That's the it. second T is an S. Second T. Oh, torsion. Tor sorry. Um, okay. Do you want a knock knock joke or a Q and A joke? Do you care? No, I don't care at all. Okay, so we'll do a knock knock joke. Now, usually the best way is to do it with simpler words, but you know what? We'll see how this goes. So, torsion. So. Oh, okay. So knock, knock. Who's there? Torsion. Torsion who? The pit, torsion, the page. This joke is getting twisted. Okay. Look at, look at some of these other ones. And then if some, anybody else wants, just give me a simple word. Uh, and then I, I can put it in and we'll see what, what comes out. It's a cheese. Cheese. Okay. And do you want a knock, knock joke or a Q and A joke? I want a Q and A. Q and A. Okay. Okay, so uh, that's a pretty common one. What do you call cheese that isn't yours? Nacho cheese. This one, I haven't, I, don't, I haven't seen this one. That one's a pretty good one. Oh, I haven't. Okay, what do you call a cheesy joke about dairy? A Gouda pun. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. Br oh, what do you call a cheesy joke that's also intellectual? Brilliant. Brie is a type <laughs> of cheese. Looking good, uh, feeling great. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. That was the last one. These are all pretty good. Okay. Does anybody, any other words, guys? Any other words you could think of? Bird. What, what was that? Is it, I, I heard bird. Is that correct? Bird? Bird, yes. B I R. Okay. Do you want it a knock knock joke or a QA joke? Either one works. Either, okay. Let's stick with the QA. I think the QA is pretty good. Okay. What do you call a bird that's afraid to fly? Chicken? I'm not sure I understand the second one. If I was a bike person, maybe I'd get the third one. Yeah, these ones, eh, I guess bird, maybe not the best word, but okay. So I, I really did like the cheese ones. I thought all of the cheese ones are pretty good. So I can go into my saved jokes page and all the jokes that I generated, they're all here. 
So let's see. I had okay. Why did yeah? Why did the cheese go to the gym? He's the one to get shredded. They call Jesus and yours, not your cheese. Cheesy joke. All that stuff. That's all saved jokes. Um, and so it seems simple, but there's a lot that goes into that, making sure that you know you can log into your account and save your jokes in the back end. And that's a big part of like what we worked on and what we learned during our uh, three weeks here uh, is like making like using these production ready tools to like build like uh, an actual website. With a little more work, this could probably be deployed to like the actual internet. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for us. Um, if anybody has the final words that they want to put in, like by all means, just let me know. All right then, sounds great. Yeah, I guess I guess that that concludes our part. So we we were uh, we are from the to the expert team batch. Um, so like th this the the batch it was a bit different because um, it uh, the way how it how it was designed was in the first week we were more about learning the Django and the React as a framework and different deployment things. And the later two weeks it were uh, more of asynchronous work. So students were given a chance to just work on whatever they feel like. And so there was no um, like streamlined curriculum. We were able to decide like which we want. So for our case, since we decided to make a joke generator like and use a React for the front end, and we we did some work like how how to how to connect. So like there, these are two different languages. So it's a React is a JavaScript and Django is a Python. So we need, we had different uh, issues like connecting those and all. So th that that was a very good learning path, I'll say and. It, it also helped us in designing the, the guided internship curriculum, which which would be the next part of it. It's a 10 week program. And I think that this this is what you could expect, like since it's, we were able to give in just three weeks. So 10 weeks would be like, it, it would more than be sufficient and you could be the top of uh, this as well. That's what my thoughts. Yeah, 